Right, this is the sixth lecture on analysis, and it's on convergent sequences. And this is basically, if you have a sequence as a function, it will go towards a certain number, and we're meant to like prove what number it goes towards. Right, first of all, the theorem. Uh, if a n, where n is a natural number, is a sequence, so so a a a1 would be the first one in the sequence, A2 and so on. Uh, and as A1, An, goes towards A, as N goes towards infinity, this just means uh, the limit is A. So as A goes further up the sequence, it will get towards a certain number. And the, the theorem is that for any epsilon greater than zero, there is exists and a big N epsilon as part of the natural numbers such that if N is greater than that number then A N minus A modulus is less than epsilon and this is this means that you can always find it so that this minus this will always be smaller than the margin for error. So this could, we could make manipulate this to make sure we want an error of 1 over a 1,000. So then we can get a value here. That's correct. And then we can find out what value in the sequence it is. Right, now how, how to solve these kind of questions. First of all, you're given a sequence and you want to guess, guess the, limit, li the limit, which will be A. Then you want to write down the inequality which we were given. Um, put our sequence here and the, the guess we have made over here and then we want to manipulate it to get n is greater than the function of epsilon. Now these questions are all right the only problem I don't like is guessing. I don't like guessing. It's not really a guess. It's kind of state the correct answer. So if you can do it in your head why bother doing all this but don't mind. Yep, I'll leave that. Right, first off, this is our sequence. 2n squared plus 1 over n squared minus 2. Now, we want to guess a limit first off. And you can either do this like the way I do is pick a big number, like 100, and do 2 times 100 squared plus 1 over 100 squared minus 2 on the calculator. And this will give you somewhere close to 2. Uh, that's the, generally the way I do it, because you're always given a calculator in the exam. But most of these you can just look at them and guess. Uh, right, and then we want to, next, after we find our guess, we want to write down the inequality. So that's what we've done here. Uh, this function of minus 2 is less than epsilon, which is fine. Next, we want to rearrange it to get a function of n. So the first thing that we did, and kind of, well, it, it makes sense, but it's just like a clever trick. This is 2 is basically n squared minus 2 over n squared minus 2. And because it's n squared minus 2, we can do similar terms over each other. So we have 2n squared plus 1 minus 2n squared minus 4 over n squared minus 2. And the minus 2n squared will cancel with this. And because it's a minus 4, we want to minus it, so we add 4. So we have 4 plus 1 is 5. So that leaves us with 5 over n squared minus 2. Should do. There we go. And next what we want to do, I don't know why they're popping up two at a time. Uh, we want to pick our, pick our value for n, basically. And n in our case, we, want, we say the limit's 2. So we have 2 squared, which is 4, minus 2, which is 3. So we're just saying n is positive. You could pick any big number, really. Uh, I just try to use the, the limit. So you could pick like 5 and have 5 squared over 2. 5 squared, sorry, is 25. Minus 2 is 23, so 5 over 23 is a positive number anyway. So we can get rid of these modulus signs. Next thing we want to do, we want to move this up. And then we can multiply that out. So that will give us... Uh, 5 is less than epsilon n squared minus 2 epsilon. And then we can move the epsilon down. So we have 5 over epsilon. Then we can move the 2 over 
5 over, over epsilon over plus 2, and then we can square root it all, so this n is greater than the square root of 5 over epsilon plus 2. There we go. And this is true, because n is basically the natural numbers, and we know that there is no upper limit to the natural numbers. So this statement is perfectly true, and we have found the limit. So it, this is our proof that the limit is 2. Now one thing I got found, my, find it, found it hard to get my head around is, uh, how do we know if it's not true? So I asked for some help, because you know, I found it hard to find, and I can thank Craig Dawson, he was very helpful with this. So this is our original equation again, it's the same equation, 2n squared plus 1 over n squared minus 2, and let's say perhaps we guessed the wrong limit. If we guessed the limit as 3, what would we do? Well, for starters, it's exactly the same, but I, what I've done here, instead of putting minus 3, I put minus 2 minus 1, which is perfectly fine, isn't it? It's just the same as minus 3. And then we can do the same as last time. We can do the n squared over minus 2, blah, 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 which will leave us with 5 over n squared minus 2 minus 1 over here. Which will leave us with this. Now, this one gets a, this is where it gets a little twist. Uh, we have n squared minus 2, this, that, and that. Right. So, if we have n as a big number, n is a big number, let's say it's 5, shall we? 5. 5 again, that's fairly big. <laughs> so we have 25 minus 2 is 23. 5 over 23 minus 1 is minus... minus 17, minus 18 over 23, which is a minus, so we want it to be a plus, so we just, uh, plus, so we make it the other way around, so we have 1 minus 5 over n squared minus 2, does that make sense? So it was minus 18 over 23, and to make it a plus, we have the 1 minus over 23, which will give us 18 over 23. So we can rearrange that and get rid of the modulus signs. Then, again, we want to rearrange it to get in terms of n, so we move this up here, this up there, and then we... we do here. Well, first of all, you can sit that one over there, actually. Sit the 1 over, it's a minus, then we can switch the signs over. Then you can move the n squared minus 2 up, and the epsilon, because we changed the signs over, we can do, it was, we can do 1 minus epsilon, move that down underneath, so it's 5 over 1 minus epsilon is n squared minus 2, we can move the 2 over to make it plus 2, and we can square root. And this will leave us with this equality. Now what we've said here, we said n is smaller than square root of 5 over 1 minus epsilon plus 2. Now you can check this, it does work, it's just a lot of working. And well, it's wrong. We know there's no number bigger than n. But what we've said here, we've said that there is a number bigger than n. So it's, it's false and it's a contradiction, so 3 is not the limit. And I think I've found out, if you substitute this value in, Well, it won't work as well if you substitute it into here. But with the old one, if we put the old value in, it will end up giving you epsilon. It's an epsilon, so it works perfectly.